Welcome back to the Hall of History and our look at JFK and the Cold War. Uh, you can see this political cartoon here, both JFK and Khrushchev sitting on uh, hydrogen bombs with their uh, fingers on the trigger. And uh, this pretty much summarizes what was going on in the early part of the early to mid part of the 1960s. This whole idea of uh, the arms race, uh, mutual mass destruction, uh, limiting the influence of communism in the Western Hemisphere. It was a very, very interesting uh, historically time period. Well, Kennedy wanted to build up the uh, conventional military and as well as a nuclear arsenal to fight communism all over the world. Again, we're going back to this whole idea of the uh, the domino theory, theory of containment. Uh, I remember this was also the time of the Vietnam War was going on, but there was also the uh, this Cold War going on with uh, principally the USSR, the Soviet Union. And at this time, uh, this is a uh, launch silo, and I'm gonna guess it's probably in the uh, in North Dakota. Uh, many of these silos were there, and uh, you can actually take tours through them now if you happen to get through that area. Well, Kennedy's first involvement, <coughs> excuse me, was with uh, the island uh, just 90 miles to the uh, to the south of Florida, uh, with Cuba and the uh, the Bay of Pigs fiasco, which it just that was that just did not work very well, and then also the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, and we'll look at uh, these three right here in uh, in our next few slides. Well, the Cuban dilemma was. Uh, if he acknowledged Cuba as an independent nation under Fidel Castro, and he also had amnesty to Cuban refugees who flee Castro, and he also had suspicion over Castle's reliance on the USSR. Uh, Castro overthrew, I believe it was in the late 50s, overthrew the uh, the regime that was in uh, in Cuba at the time. Uh, Castro's an interesting figure. He uh, actually played in the Washington Senators' uh, minor league for baseball. I guess he was quite the uh, baseball player. He was also educated by the uh, Jesuits, uh, the, the Catholic Church, uh, especially in, oh, in the Caribbean and in South America and so forth, uh, had a strong influence at the time. Well, so then, so Kennedy was faced with this, you know, if you acknowledge him, uh, you also want to help out the refugees who are fleeing, uh, especially to the Miami area, and then also Castro started, uh, you know, throwing his lot in with the uh, with the communists, with the Soviet Union, and this presented a real dilemma that you would have a Soviet-influenced country only 90 miles from the United States, well within missile range, and there was the uh, the real threat. Well, at first, Kennedy was thought to train uh, the refugees to go back and invade. Uh, Cuba and uh, take the country back over from Castro and uh, it was called the uh, the Bay of Pigs it was a uh, pretty much a complete fiasco and uh, the United States ended up having to rescue the uh, the exiles that were uh, captured for about 50 uh, he says here 53 million dollars uh, it just did not work well it was not well coordinated and uh, many of the uh, Oh, there was these airstrikes, and they were late because they were on a different time zone, flying from different bases. It was just not well executed, and it was a real black mark uh, in the Kennedy administration. Also at this time, uh, Berlin, which was the uh, capital of Germany, was split into half between West and East Berlin, East Berlin being the, uh, the Soviet-influenced part of the uh, country. And... Uh, and you see here a wall was built really not to keep uh, West Berliners out of East Berlin but not to let anybody from East Berlin escape into West Berlin and uh, this was a very public and figuratively speaking also a dividing line between democracies and between the uh, Soviet Union and communism. Kennedy went here at one time uh, it, was, it was about this time period uh, where he uttered his famous line, Ich ein Berliner, meaning I am a Berliner, uh, feeling, uh, you know, rallying the uh, the cause on the western side of the uh, Berlin Wall. 
Berlin Wall came down, oh, I want to say about 1989 when uh, Ronald Reagan was president. And there's actually a piece of the wall in the, uh, in the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Perhaps the, uh, the biggest crisis as far as uh, we're concerned was the Cuban Missile Crisis. With uh, USSR having influence in Cuba, they started building missile bases. And I can remember as a uh, young child in school, we would actually have uh, oh, air raid uh, uh, nuclear bomb attack drills where we'd hide underneath our desk. A lot of good that would do in, in case of a, uh, a true nuclear attack by the Russians. But uh, I can remember going through those drills. And what ended up happening with the Cuban Missile Crisis, well, these missiles, once they were put in there, they could reach all parts of the United States. And that was just not going to stand. And so Kennedy stated that any attack from a Cuban missile would be seen as an attack from the USSR. You know, and Cuba was a satellite nation of Russia. There was no two ways about that. Well, to counteract this, uh, you can see that the uh, really what ended up happening here, we uh, put a uh, naval armada embargo on uh, on the whole area in the Caribbean. We did not allow uh, ships to go in and out, especially uh, Russian ships carrying missiles. And you can also see that we had a large force that was uh, prepared to invade Cuba. And this really, the, the two the two presidents really, it, it, was a, it was a showdown. There was no two ways about it. It was like two gunfighters uh, staring down each other and you know, was one going to draw, was the other one going to back off and go away? Well, in the end, after uh, after a few days, uh, Khrushchev did call off his ship. And at the at, after, at this point, then Kennedy and Khrushchev agreed to stop interfering in, uh, in other places around the world. Well, that didn't really last too long. But the, uh, the main goal was uh, achieved that these uh, nuclear missiles were out of uh, 90 miles south of... Uh, the United States. Well, the other outcome of this actually put a, uh, a hotline, the uh, the famous red phone between the White House and the Kremlin, and the two presidents could uh, call each other any time and discuss anything and you know and talk directly. And there it was. Now oh, it's been in a lot of films of of this time period. And it was you know it was you know where they could just call up and chat and you still see it in uh comedy skits uh oh and you know saturday night lives and a few skits on it where they just pick up the red phone and uh the two leaders would talk to each other i don't know jimmy fallon has done it on the uh, tonight show just recently so it is a, a very famous uh part of uh history uh, also the limited test ban treaty and it stopped the uh nuclear weapons from being tested in the atmosphere so it, instead of being tested in the atmosphere many of these went underground but this was the start of at least backing off this mutual arms destruction uh, where we you know we just kept building uh, nuclear weapons uh, both us and the uh, and the Russians also at this time not in this particular one but the Chinese were starting to uh, to get in the active uh, nuclear weapons also so that ends our uh, our look at uh, Kennedy's involvement in the Cold War.